and an example of that for people that know uh, the work of gerrymander, not the political word, but the writer. Mm -hmm. Um, he, he wrote a book called The Four Arguments for the Elimination of Television. And in that book, one of the studies they did in Canada, they had the, the for, good fortune of being able to watch a uh, Inuit Native American village as electricity was introduced. And they studied it to see what would happen. So they basically determined it took five years to destroy their, their traditional culture. Once television, five, five years. years. And I saw that firsthand in Mauritania because mm -hmm. I lived with Bedouin. I was in a town that had no electricity. Every night it was literally chanting. The whole village was chanting the Quran. It was like bees buzzing. And it was one of the most extraordinary things. And then you had the sky. See, I think one of the reasons why we've lost our spirituality is because of artificial light. And it's interesting we call it artificial light mm -hmm. because if you look up at the sky, in the Sahara Desert, and I've been reduced to tears on yeah. many nights. Just look, the, the heavens declare your glory. I've been in the Sinai. I know. I, it, it, it's, it's breathtaking. It's breathtaking. And there's a reason why those guys fled to the desert, mm -hmm. you know, because if you want to be close to the heavens, that's as close as you're going to get. We don't see the stars anymore. You know, Plato said God put the stars there to show us the order of the heavens that we would desire to bring the order down into ourselves. So what happens when we don't see the heavens anymore? And I, I would really like to see a city, you might think of this, uh, Mayor Fisher might think of just having an hour, you know, once a month, where all the lights in the city are turned off on a clear night so that people can actually go out and see the heavens. Just see the heavens. It's amazing. Stars are amazing. I'm the chair of the planetarium. Which, if you think about it for a second, is a sad reality, which is that in cities we built That's places you place you where you can the see stars. the stars yeah. because we project them. Yeah. But at least then And they you... do it geocentrically. Nobody points that out, that when you're in a planetarium, they don't have you revolving around the heavens. They have the heavens right. revolving around it's you. It's the ultimate So they have experience. to do a Ptolemaic planetarium. But please visit us at the planetarium so you'll know what to look for in the sky. But uh, I think we really, we need to have time with ourselves alone. Um, where we can just disengage and turn off all these things. I have a friend of mine, he's an imam in Washington, D.C., who has a box in the, in the, in the, in the front of his uh, house, and when everybody comes in, they have to put the cell phones in the box, and they're not allowed to use any uh, cell phones inside the house. Um, and he's a Sudanese man, and, and I thought that was really an excellent practice. I think a lot of us need to disengage um, from, from the madness of, of these constantly being, you know, texting and getting called. We don't have to answer the phone every time it rings. You know, you, you really don't. Uh, now you're really sounding revolutionary. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Narcissism was, you know, def it was, uh, I think, it was designated in the 1970s in that famous book, The Culture of Narcissism. Um, you know, he saw something that nobody was seeing at the time, how narcissistic our culture was coming. I think the selfie is just such an indicative aspect of our, of our civilization. Um, this idea of just taking your own picture. You know, I've never, I've never carried a camera. I've never taken, I don't have any pictures um, of myself. In, I've been all over the world. I've been in the, you know, I, I, I met the Pope, you know, and, and had a picture with the Pope. And, you know, I've just never had that urge to have these pictures. You know, my wife, because so, some people send us things and she wants to put them on. But I said, I don't want them on the wall. You know, I, I don't want to do that. And, and I, don't, I don't get that thing about pictures. I, you know, like I, for me, this is where I take my pictures. I, and I try to be present with people and remember them as best I can. And I learned this from the Bedouin because what really struck me about the Bedouin that I lived with is they were so present. And I would meet a Bedouin that I'd met 10 years before. He would remember what we talked about, the conversation we had. And, and they don't take pictures because they know. And so this whole obsession with images. Uh, the New York Times recently reported that the average American sees more images in one day than a 19th century English person saw in his entire lifetime. And these images are flooding our hearts. We're losing that just that space. 
you know, the imageless space. You know, one of the things when Trajan went into the holiest of holies, the thing that really disturbed him was there was nothing in there. <laughs> you know, and he, and he wanted the Jews to explain, like, where's your idols? Where's your images? It's an empty place. And, 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 and so that emptiness, we have to have that emptiness to, to, to be able to, uh, to contemplate. Um, and I would recommend reading Neil Postman's incredible book, uh, amusing ourselves to death and that second chapter about why the Decalogue would have prohibited images because he argues that if you want people to understand abstractions you have to watch out for the images that you give them uh, and, and God wants us to know s something a concept that is so abstract and and this is why image-based cultures uh, become debased very quickly um, so I, I really think the images are, are harming us immensely. Um, the, the pornographic images that are going into the minds of these young kids, um, it's really terrifying because they can't get these things out. You know, they won't be able to get those images out of their mind. And I know this from, I, I have people that have converted to Islam or have these problems, and they've told me when they, just when they open their prayer, images start flooding their, their uh, and, and they want to get rid of them. So. It's really difficult. Spiritually, it can be done with a lot of work, but you have to be careful what you put into your heart. And I once, I was with a Bedouin. Uh, we had gone from the, the, uh, the desert to Nuwak shop, and there was a TV in the room, and it was on, and he was looking the other way. And he was a man in his 30s, and he was a student of knowledge. Uh, and he was looking the other way, and I was with a Libyan, uh, Abdul Razak Mukhtar, he's the ambassador in Turkey now for Libya, but he asked him, have you ever seen television? He said, no. He said, don't you want to look at it? And he said, I heard that it has foul things on it, and I, I don't want to let it into my heart. Hmm. And, and, you know, that wow. level of being is just, where are those people? <laughs>